You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Oh, and welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here from Waters Garden Center. Our family's been gardening throughout northern Arizona for many decades, since the 50s. Uh, landscaping throughout northern Arizona. We've had farms throughout northern Arizona as far as greenhouse farms, growing trees, fruit trees, shrubs, that kind of stuff. Not farming wheat and corn, that kind of stuff. Uh, that was the previous generation did that. We're garden centers, so we help folks landscape in their backyard. And so we there's a seasonality. There's, there's a rhythm that happens that, that you need to get used to in northern Arizona. And this week describes it. It, the, the mountains of Arizona, June is just hot. Oh my goodness. I just want to sweat. I just want to lay there and don't touch me. No clothes. Just, just sit there. don't touch in the shade. Don't touch me. It's just hot. It's not fun. If I wanted to be this hot, I'd move down to the deserts and be a desert rat, a flatlander. But no, we're up here in God's countries. And so July comes and the rains, it's, the, it's like the heat almost woos the storm clouds. It brings in the thunder, the lightning, the monsoons. And so that's what we've been having. And it cools down the summer. And then we almost get this false autumn. And then it cools down so nice. The nights get just perfect. And then the clouds leave and they take off and the rains become spottier. Yeah, we can still get rains, but the heat is gone and the rain is not all the time torrential, you know, rains. It just cools down. And then we get this, this false or Indian summer or elongated summer that goes right through fall, really, right through really into, into November last year. It was just beautiful, just stunning, just gorgeous. You've got to love Northern Arizona. It's just so nice. And so that's why we live up here and so many other folks, folks have a second home up here. And so this is this described, this is normal for us. And so you need plants that can go along with the rhythm. Now, what you'll find is September, usually by the middle of September, definitely October 1, you'll start to see the fall color show up on your trees, your maples. The, the, the first ones that start to go are the sumacs. And they're beautiful orange colors. The low-grow sumacs all the way up to the really big staghorn sumacs and everything in between. There's lots and lots of varieties of sumacs that grow here. And they're native. They're just tough. So we use a lot of them. And then it will go into the cottonwoods and the willows. And then it will be the maples. And then finally it will end up being the, the ash. And, and the last one to go will be the the uh, ornamental pears or Bradford pears, aristocrat pears. The, the, not the fruiting pears. The ornamental. Just they have the flowers without the fruit. I guess fruiting would be the same as far as that goes. So there's the rhythm. And that goes from now through really mid-September through Middle of December, it's a very, very long autumn or, or fall colored season. The The article that I wrote this week, the garden column that was published, is picked up by the, is picked up by a lot of folks. It's actually read. And so I write a weekly garden column on the mountains of Arizona, which applies to the mountains of any place. It's called the mountain gardener for a reason. It just goes across, but it's a, unique for us. If you see that some of the trees in your yard or some of the trees in your neighborhood are turning color early. It's, it's pronounced. I mean, it's like, wow, why is that one going into color? And all the rest of them, all the maples are fine. They're just green. But this one's starting to show yellow or, or orange or red. Why? Why is this one? That's an indication that that tree is stressed out. And so if you're feeling sick yourself... You're at home and you wake up in the morning. You've got to be at work, power meetings all day long, and you just feel rotten. Oh, my gosh. What's the thing you want to do? Go back to bed. And so your plants will put themselves to bed early. They're just going, I'm, I'm not waiting another three weeks, four weeks. I'm, I'm checking out right now. Good enough. I'm going to bed now. Defoliate. Show my color. Drop all my leaves hibernate. That's what I'm going to do. And so that's a, if you're a gardener, you know to read this. If you're not a gardener, now you know how to read the landscape. If you see the color show up too soon, 
beyond all your neighbors and friends, that means your plant is stressed out. Why would it be stressed out? That's the real question, especially an old guy. Let's say it's been around 10 years. You know, the house has been there. The tree was planted back when it was first built. And all of a sudden now it has issues. It's one of several things. One, I can tell you that the golden locust or honey locust are really struggling. They got hammered. In fact, a lot of them got killed this year. Now, now golden locust, it comes out in spring with this beautiful gold color. And then the new growth is always gold. And then the, it matures to a nice green, kind of a lacy, small leafed rows of small leaves. And then it drops its leaves, usually in November, uh, it drops its leaves uh, and, and is deciduous. It just goes through through winter without any foliage. Some of them are completely yellow right now. Totally inappropriate. What happened was last June, remember when it was May, it was like it was in the 80s, 70s, all May, all spring was 70s, 80s. And then the first week in June came and it went to 105 like that, I mean, instantly. That stressed out the, the locust. They were not used to that. They're not used to 105, much less going from 75 to 105. That temperature swing with the dryness in, ju in June stressed out the locust. In addition to that, we got our rains, which were heavier than normal. Lots and lots of rain. And so that pattern, kind of cold to hot, and then heavy rain, soggy, wet, gooey, I mean, it just it, it doesn't like that. And so they got canker. So you can Google a locust canker, and it will show up. And you'll see they get they turn color early. In midsummer, they're turning this gold color. And then and then the, the bark will actually grow these spores, actually. It's, it's actually a disease that's eating the sugars underneath the bark. And it's just literally devouring the trees whole. They will not recover. If your locust is completely gold right now, tag it for a chainsaw this winter. If it's just a little gold, I think you're fine. Pray for a harsh, harsh winter that will kill off those spores so you can reset, prune up. If you're going to make, make pruning cuts to a diseased tree, it is critical, imperative. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you make a cut through a disease, let's say a branch that has canker on it or leaf spot or any kind of, of, of disease on it, then you go and make another cut to another portion of the tree. You just spread it from here to over there. It'd be much like smallpox. You know, we go through and a, a family member gets it or chicken pox or any other disease, the flu, and it's in your house and you start hugging and kissing and touching and hug, you know, cooing over the kids and they're all, the, you just spread it from me to you. Well, trees do the exact same thing. It spreads very easily from, from branch to branch and tree to tree. So be really careful if you're pruning out dead branches. Usually you'll have a bucket of water that has one part bleach to 10 parts water. It's 10 to 1. So every cut, you make a cut, you dip it in this bleach water to kill off the disease that got on that blade. Then you make the next cut. So it's kind of a time-consuming thing to clean up a diseased tree, but some of the locusts are pronounced. Some other things to watch, let's say it's your uh, maples. They should not be turning, uh, uh, flowering pears. They should not, not, not be turning. Those, if they're turning already, that means that you've got something else going on that's stressing it out. Usually it's at the root level. It's either grubs, little white C-shaped worms that attack trees. In fact, I've had so many customers they're having their plants literally blow over in the wind. They ate all the roots off. So there's all this root pressure that can't keep up with the top growth. It goes, oh, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to drop my leaves and call it good. I'll, I'll see you next spring. Could be pocket gophers. So a little tiny underground rat that eats the roots or more likely, this is what I think it is. We had unusually wet a monsoonal pattern. And so that soil loaded up with more moisture than normal. And so we filled up all the air, air pockets. Those should have H2O there. Now it's got, I mean, it should have air pockets, but it's got water molecules in there. And literally we filled up all the soil pockets with water molecules and it's drowned. It's, it's literally drowning. And so you see this stress coming out on the plants. If you see that, 
Uh, I'll have a secret for you on how to get those plants to turn around. But Ken and Lisa Lane will be right back on The Mountain Gardener. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, also known as The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain landscapes. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. We believe retirement means more time to garden and plants make you happier at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, and we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She helps us handle the ever-increasing volume of <laughs> digital questions, emails, mm-hmm. Facebook posts, tweets. We're kind of connected in all those arenas just because, well, we're trying to reach out to people and make them better gardeners. Right. And so this segment is to cover what is everyone else asking about, what's on their radar, what's on their mind. And hopefully you can pick up some of that and, and use it in your own garden. So, Lisa. Yes. Nice having you in the studio. Thank you. It's like Always we never see each here. other. We camp out here like, on... Who are you? What is it? Two, three acres and we, we like ships passing the night sometimes. <laughs> That's the key to a happy marriage let's when just, you work together. <laughs> let's just stay right here. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Anyway, we'll put a hot tub in the corner. Uh, we'll so. uh, have a grill. I don't know. <laughs> grill don't could be lights. fun. In so the nursery. nights after work, because I love being here when we, not that I don't love our customers, but there's something about being in the nursery yard when nobody else is here. It's I think just, you get to see it like a customer does. It's yeah. therapy. It's less pressure. When you're here, you're so attuned to your guests. That's true. That you you feel that pressure or angst always there to make sure they're comfortable. So your radar is mm-hmm. like a cyborg on where are, who needs help, <laughs> who needs help. But when that's done... You kind of go, wow, this really is a great place. Mm, I like going point. on vacation, coming back and looking at it through fresh, French lens, yes. going, wow, this this really is a great place. That's true. So, so many nurseries are muddy messes or crowded <laughs> and the aisles are tight and people are bumping against each other. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like walking through Walmart in the middle of the holiday season. They fill up every one of those aisles with piles <laughs> yeah. of stuff. You can't get through. It's like, I feel can't like I'm get bumping through. against everyone. So it is yeah. frustrating, but I yeah, I like could be open and sure. it's fragrant and birds chirping to the background. Very relaxed. And pretty women walking in the back end where I'm trying to go, where's Lisa? I'm over here. Well, where'd she go? What's going on? <laughs> I move pretty fast on the earth. <laughs> like the Energizer <laughs> bunny with okay. a shopping cart. That's true. Let's get back to questions because okay, yeah. we've gone way off the deep end with that one. <laughs> Our first question is from Brenda and Chino. She wants to put in a cool season vegetables. Yeah. She wants to know what she can put in and when should she start putting them in the ground? Yeah, you start the end of August and you go through October. That's your window. Mm-hmm. And you're planting cool season vegetables are going to be, and I would say herbs would be in that realm too, like sure. parsley's, oregano's. Those are all, Sage. you can harvest those right through the end of the year. So you plant those now while it's still warm. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to wait until the last tomato comes out and then <laughs> switch that out. And then it's the end of October, 1st, November, and the soil is starting to cool and you haven't had time to bulk mm-hmm. up the roots and get your harvest. You put them in now while it's still warm. So anything that looks even remotely weak, Rip that thing out of your garden, out of the pot or whatever you're growing in, and replace it with your cool season veggies, which would be your leafy. If you're harvesting the flower or the leaf or the stem, those are going to be typically your cool season vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, spinach, kales. Those are all plants you can plant now Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And you will be harvesting those, some of them right through winter. Kale, you never stop. I mean, there's a couple weeks in January Mm -hmm. when it's colder. And I'm talking to the folks that are yeah, Kingman, Prescott, Payson areas. <laughs> Not Flagstaff. You folks in William and Flagstaff. I know there's <laughs> yeah. towers up there broadcasting. There, you guys are in a totally, you do shut down for a month or two. Right. But then it powers back up again for you. So you're planting them now. And look mm-hmm. for any hole or any way to squeeze those in. In fact, I've been known to plant some of those in our container gardens. I, sque- I, I squeeze them in when you're not looking. When the petunia <laughs> fades or that geranium just stopped blooming, I'll pull them out and you can throw in mm-hmm. lettuce. It's pretty. I mean, it's just it's kale's beautiful. I mean, Swiss it's, chard. It's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, those things you can plant now. Mm-hmm. And you'll be harvesting those when everything else, the end of, of October, 1st of November, Basically, the garden you see now is going to be vaporized by frost. Okay, that's two months off. But still, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be gone. But if you strategically plant some cool season things, you'll be, plant, you'll be harvesting. Uh, you can increase an extra two, three months worth of harvest time. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. Next question is from Dennis in Prescott. Um, he wants to know if he should be reducing the amount of water he's giving to his Colorado spruce now that it's not so hot. Oh, yeah. Abs- you should have been doing that for the last month. Mm-hmm. Or two months, or when did the monsoons hit? Yeah. First of July mm-hmm. should have cut it back then. So everyone's watering still like it's June, like it's hot, mm-hmm. and we're way past that heat of summer. Now we're into the perfect the, the season that we're famous for. Uh, this later monsoon through autumn is just spectacular for the North Country. It, the indication if you keep if you overwater, you keep putting that irrigation on. Plus, you've got some rain coming at you. I've got a buddy. We serve rotary together. He lives up on one of the ridge lines. Beautiful view overlooking the city. He's had over 13 inches of rain wow. at his house in his yard. Wow. 13 inches. Now he's up on a ridge line mm-hmm. where the clouds, they do dump on him to get up over the mountain and get over the city. So he does get a little more than normal, but 13 inches plus your regular irrigation, you'll, you'll kill your your evergreens if you're not careful. So they'll start yellowing out at the base and in the middle mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll drop their foliage. They'll have some green out, green tufts on the outer ends. Those are all indications of I'm too wet and I can't breathe. <laughs> so they need oxygen down at their root level. So yeah, cut it back. Mm-hmm. I think you can really, what, what we do is we add a day or two in between the water cycles. We water the same amount every time. Mm-hmm. We play with how frequent does it come on. If you take that equation out, I'd have to figure out how much to give them. I just know I give it this much every time. Then all you're playing with with your irrigation is how frequently mm-hmm. do I have it cycle on. The equation is much easier to figure out. True. Very True. Okay, next question is from Jason. It says, my neighbor told me to put soil sulfur on my plants in the yard, but he couldn't tell me exactly why I should put it on oh, yeah. and when I should put sure. it on. Sure, yeah. So um, soil sulfur is to lower your pH of your soil. Now, what happens is our water is very alkaline, and you'll see that white ring build up in your bathtub, in your sinks, on your countertops, in your toilets. Well, that also builds up in your soil. And so if you keep watering, you know, two hours, once a week, your trees and shrubs, the same cycle every week, that white buildup, that alkalinity will will build up at the same level. All of a sudden, your plants will start to turn yellow. The leaves will start to become smaller or they'll drop. The flowers will become, they'll lose their fragrance or their color. Those are all indications that my pH, the chemistry of the soil, has, has actually creeped up too high And now you're starting to see the plants affect that. It's unique to the Southwest. There's a little bubble of of Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada. Mm -hmm. We have very alkaline water. Everyone else has very acidic water or acidic soils. So there they'll tell you to add lime to your soil. It'll sweeten your soil. We never do that here because our water is so alkaline. We're always adding sulfur. We do just the opposite to what everyone else in the country does. That's why you're doing it. So if you had yellow leaves or yellow foliage or it stopped blooming, Mm -hmm. those are all indications of my pH crept too high. And a lot of folks will come in and ask for iron. Mm -hmm. It's not an iron issue. It's we've watered so much through summer and the first, you know, spring through summer, we're starting to see that pH. Now, generally we say put it on in the spring to set the stage to keep things in check. Mm -hmm. And, And the fertilizer, if you're putting the right fertilizer on, we actually front load 
our fertilizer. We've got an all-natural fertilizer where it has a lot of sulfur in it because we know that we're trying to counteract partly your, your water and, and secondly, adding food. So that, that's why you do it. Do we go into too much? We're into so the way technical they, side of fertilizers. If they and, feel like they need it in their yard, but it's not spring, can they do it in the fall? You can do it anytime. Now, I've got a guy, and they should, people that are if they were really into this, mm-hmm. I actually made a handout, two pages, really easy to use, called the Four Step Feeding Program. Uh-huh. It's not fertilizers. It's the yard. Mm-hmm. It'd be evergreens to lawns to, fir- to, to shrubs to perennials, four-step program. And it goes over at an all-purpose plant food in spring, summer, and fall. You add your soil sulfur in spring, usually in the month of March. You add soil activator, which is similar to, to the uh, soil sulfur, but not, a little different the way it works in summer and then you, you anyway it's got ask for that four yes. step program to feeding when you come in it's free it's a four step program it's four not step a program step, it's a four step. <laughs> <laughs> you tune into ken and lisa lane the mountain gardeners be right back The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. We believe strawberries taste better picked fresh from the garden at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Now, just before Lisa came into the studio, we had we were talking trees. Just as if fall starts early, you start to see trees turning color early. Your shrubs turning. Why is that happening? I ended on a wet note. Now, we've had so much rain that many of the trees, if it was in a low spot or it had uh, where th- where the landscape from a new house was funneling now more water than usual to a certain area. Different reasons why the the ground will load up. In my own yard, I killed off a gopher plant or or gopher purge. Uh, It's a a drought-hardy, tough little nail. It's been there for two years. We had so much rain, and I'm actually rain harvesting. I passive rain harvest off the roof. I take it in in a four-inch pipe, and I run it throughout the, the gardens, the raised beds, all the way through the landscape. It finally dumps into the uh, waterfall, and then it flows over down the stream and fills up the pond. Then the pond fills up, and then it overflows into a lower basin, just a retaining pond. And then finally the water spills out and keeps going downhill towards, but I want to load up my, my soil as much as I can with this water. I want it to stay here. Well, I, I, I caught too much. There was too much rain. And gopher plants are, are very drought-hardy, very tough, kind of this has a needle leaf to it. It's a blue-colored, almost succulent-looking plant with this beautiful yellow flower in spring. Well, mine is dead. Of course, it's right there where the rain harvest was going on, so I'm sure the ground got too wet. The same thing can happen with trees, established shrubs. They start to turn colors. What I recommended in this year, in, in this week's garden column, came out today. Um, it's being published by Prescott E. News. It's picked up. It's picked up by several places. Anyway, it goes out to my core by email to my core garden club members here at the garden center. I mentioned what to do if you see that, and what I recommended was to use soil activator on plants that are stressed out. And so, soil activators. It's a granular product. It's kind of like. So like like chocolate or like a, it's it reinvigorates 
the, the soil is what it does. It, it ignites the soil, the microbes and worms and mycorrhizal fungi in the soil where it starts to begin, it makes the soil alive. The plants go, oh, man, I've been so stressed out. But look, look what the soil's doing. I, can, I should send out more roots. And so it tickles the feet of plants. And so it wants to encourage his roots is what it does. Soil activator helps plants that are stressed out. So put that on right away. ASAP. I mean, just right now. I mean, this weekend now. To get, stop listening to the radio. Get to the garden center. Get some soil activator. It's that important if the plants are stressed out. Then in a month, I said, go ahead and fertilize. So you'll hear me starting October 1, fertilize, fertilize, fall feeding. It's the most important of the year. Fertilize, fertilize. But you don't want to fertilize a stressed out plant. We want to stabilize it first with the soil activator. Let it stimulate for a few weeks. Then follow up with the, the regular organic fertilizers. So that was the advice I gave to, to, to many folks that were reading. I mean, there's like 10,000 of you that get this this email and that's just my list there's a whole bunch of other folks that just pick it up through other news agencies magazines that kind of stuff so take a, that's the advice i can give you if things look stressed they are if your locust has got canker give it soil activator now follow up with food in the fall pray for harsh winter where it kills off the spores and next spring it will ignite with new growth and all will be well I would say that's a good program, that two-tag tag team, soil activator followed up by a fertilizer in a month. That is a great program for anything that blooms or fruits, like your fruit trees. Or if you want better uh, lilacs in the spring, flowering quince. If you want better fall color out of your burning bush. We just had the most beautiful burning bush come to the nursery. Just a very tiny hint of red, but it's burning red here in three weeks. It'll be burning red. I mean, just spectacular. If you want to bring that color out of your maples and burning bush, those fall-colored plants, flame maples, then that, that program, the soil activator with the food, encourages the better, more vibrant colors because both those products are acidic. Make the ground acidic, the color becomes brighter. If you're not part, if you don't get my newsletter, I encourage you, it's, it's a local source, I don't just copy it from Google and repurpose. It's actually, here's what we're seeing going on. Here's the issues. Here's what you want to do, and here's how to tackle it. So it, it's, it's in sequence with the rhythm. And really, it's whatever Ken's doing in his own. Ken and Lisa, if we're gardening in the yard, that's what the column is. I'm a pretty busy guy. I don't have time to just come up with new stuff. It's here's what I was doing, and here's why. And here's what you should be doing and why you should be doing it too. And so that was the article this week. If you want a copy of that, we'll come into the nursery and we'll put you on the list. Or it's online really easy. Learn to garden.org. Learn to garden. Like learn and then not the number two, but actual two. Learn to T O garden. Dot org. There's a landing page that just puts your name and your email. That's it. And if ever you want to get off, there's a there's a vaporize button at the bottom. You go, I'm done. And so you're off. So learn to garden.org. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden experts and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on Shop, and choose Personal Garden Shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The Personal Garden Shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. We believe searching Waters plants are better than a Google search at Waters Garden Center. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. We give this segment to her just because she's so so darn smart. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say cute. And, and cute, okay. No, I never know with women. Do they want to hear cute or smart? Well, I don't know. I'm such a man. Skinny. If only I understood. You forgot the word skinny. You are a skinny, you are a thinny. cute, and smart. You are, well, I think just run around the yard keeps you, 
Plus, you've got this regiment. You're with Sergeant Steve, Sergeant Steve. and his uh, boot camp. Boot camp. It's You're the, up at like four thirty in the morning. Ridiculous time in the morning. I don't know how you women do it. Now, as a man, can I join Sergeant Steve's no. women only? Women only. Really? That's yes. probably best. And we have fun. Really? Even at women? five thirty in the morning, women we have, have fun. Really? Okay. Yes. So Sergeant Steve's a, f- a friend at, at uh-huh. the you know, chamber stuff, and he's a promoter, but he's an exercise nut. He is super crazy fit, mm-hmm. and I think he is a past sergeant. He, so. is, a, he is an actual sergeant, retired oh. from the Army. Oh, he is. Um, I think he's been retired like a year and a half or something. Got he, bored and said, I'm going to start a boot camp for women. Yeah. Get well, these women in shape. <laughs> he's very into fitness, but not like crazy fitness. He's into have a good time and still be fit. We should have a Waters Garden Center Get Fit for Anyone program. <laughs> and whenever a semi comes in, we need to unload all those trees and shrubs off the back. You know, lifting weights. We don't need to lift weights. We need to lift buckets of dirt. That's you know, true. Flats of flowers. And mm-hmm. uh, we'll get you. We'll get you. In, we'll whip you into shape. <laughs> Crush your true. back. Increase the arthritis. And uh, <laughs> maybe not. But she'll not be such in a good shape. idea. No. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. You are fit. You are, you are smart. You are. What was the other one? Pretty, cute. Cute. I think I'll you're take beautiful, pretty. my dear. Aww, I think you're stunning. <laughs> In fact, the longer we're married, I think I just can't take my eyes off of you. Aww. You just you haven't lost. You're as pleasant to look at now as we were the day we were married. Gosh. My really? Goodness. Well, I don't anyway. know what to say. I can't <laughs> say that over the airwaves. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet. Move on. Where, where, where are we going with this? Thank you. I want to go cry. I need a tissue. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to what we were going to talk about, which is not nearly as romantic or fun. Okay. <laughs> but javelinas. Oh, there's a transition. Yeah. <laughs> They're Javelina. ugly, stinky, smelly. <laughs> don't see well. Don't they charge it in well. the dark. Yeah. yeah. So javelina. And I would venture to say there's probably no part of Prescott or the surrounding areas, surrounding cities that do not have javelina. Now, I don't know if they're up in Flagstaff. Probably mm. not. What do you think? I don't know. They've got prairie dogs and their own, their own issues. So they're kind of, yeah. they're throughout northern Arizona. They're, they're just every place. They're throughout Arizona yeah. pretty much. Starting way down south, Tucson, Phoenix, yeah. um, all those places up into here. I just don't know about Flagstaff. Just but, think yeah. of a wild pig that stinks even worse. It's dark colored with a mm-hmm. white band going across its shoulder, big tusks. But they're not a pig. They're a pickerel. Pickerel. <laughs> pickerel. Picking in ear. <laughs> What is related to some rat thing? Pessiary? No. Actually, like I've that. heard they can actually trace them back to some sort of DNA back to some wild boar in Eastern mm-hmm. Europe or something. So they they do have a pig. They say they're not a pig. Then they say they're, they are a pig. I, I can't, yeah. I'm not sure what they is are. Is it tomato, tomato? Yeah. I don't know. Basically, they tear up your yard and right. rip you a new one. So they, yeah. they're, they're curious about all the they stuff you They are curious. Plant. And you're right. They can't see worth a hoot. They have very bad... Eyesight, but they got a sense of smell yeah. that's crazy, crazy good. So, and that's why they're in checking out your yard because they're smelling stuff and they're hungry. And they're yeah. they're supposed to be omnivores. Now, a lot of the new literature I'm reading says we think they're more just herbivores. They may eat some insect grubs and that type of thing, but they're mainly looking for roots and plants and seeds yeah. and that type of thing. I think they'll eat anything they come across. That could but be. they're rooting up the soil, and what are they going to come across the most? Roots and the plants you just planted. Right. Yeah, they're just yeah. Which is herbivore? Herbivore and omnivore is I'll eat anything in front of my eyes. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So I there's. Think eat yeah, I don't know. I think I don't know. I'm just bringing it up because I thought it was interesting. As we learn things all the time, it changes. Yeah. Um, another thing that's changed, we've had a list for, I don't know how long of animal resistant, javelina resistant plants. And I think in the what, early nineties, we put the that forest list service together and we came up with that and, and the, yeah, right. just walk in the neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. What are they leaving alone? Came up with that list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Javelinas being javelinas, they also adapt well. True. So they are eating things that have been on the old list and we're finding, oh, okay, we need to take that one off because they're eating that one. What can we put back on is the question. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So that's kind of always the list changes a bit. But there's yeah. some things you can do to keep the javelinas out of your yard. And don't 
don't feed them, number one. Yeah. Don't let your neighbors feed them. Don't feed the javelina. What are you thinking? Do not but feed them. But they're so them. cute, the little babies. And they're adorable. But how many do you want in your yard well, that's why they and in your neighbor's yard? sauce. Do you know that they're considered part of the big game hunt? Yeah. So you, I didn't know that. Yeah, I used to hunt them as a kid. In fact, yeah. as a kid back in the 70s, we, there weren't javelina up in Prescott. We had to go down to Wickenburg, yeah. Anthem, New River, those areas, mm -hmm. uh, to go hunt javelina. And so they introduced them up here in the mountains Oops. later. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've got the herds up here. There were never javelina up here as a kid. So yeah. sort of relatively in the last 20, 30 years mm -hmm. have they shown up. Right. Yeah. So if you've got them, you can't just shoot them because you're tired of them, and you can't no. just poison them. That's right. You have to be careful, or you'll get yourself in trouble. That's right. Don't That's let true. anyone know that you did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have heavenlies, don't put out bird seed. And I know you want to feed the birds and love the birds, but they love bird seed, yeah. and they're going to come find it. Same with a bird bath. They want water. They're looking for water sources. So they're going to knock over your bird bath yeah. and they're going to be drawn into that. So just don't. We'll get a better bird feeder so yard. it doesn't. Well, that's true. An, an electric fence, mm -hmm. one foot off the ground. Even in neighborhoods where they say you can't have fence, you can sneak that up and spray paint it green because that's what we did <laughs> in our neighborhood. And no one knows we have it. I put on a timer. Right. So it only comes on the evening when Lisa and her dogs are not out there yep if you i remember zipped. one time i was out there pulling weeds and it was nah. the timer had gotten mixed up i don't know if a storm knocked it off or whatever just about knocked me on my rear end thank you very much tingled all the way up my arm thought i was having a heart attack that's not <laughs> knocking you on your butt that's my nut my hand is tingling well, strokes do the same thing <laughs> <laughs> i was pretty sure i was dying so anyway, what plants can we put out so, there that oh, they won't eat? Oh, we about plants. Yeah. Well, if you want to look for flowers, we're kind of moving into that fall season. Um, chrysanth chrysan chrysanthemums. Yeah. Chrysanthemums, a great fall plant. Nice, pretty, long-lasting fall color. Yeah. They don't bother them. Don't like them at all. Snapdragons are another yeah, great one. Yeah. That they asters, same way. Asters, um, alyssum. It's been on the list for a long, long time. Occasionally they'll eat it, but I think if you put it with your snaps and other things that they're not going to want to bother, they'll just leave that alone yeah. too. You know, I had someone out in Stone Ridge area, out in Prescott mm -hmm. Valley. They had rosemary. They took some rosemary cuttings. They were coming in bothering one of their other shrubs, mm -hmm. uh, I think euonymus. And they put that around their euonymus and oh, they stopped yeah. bothering. They didn't Good plant idea. rosemary, they just put cuttings it around there. it. And that rosemary fragrance, that herbal fragrance, just mm -hmm. kept them away. That's I think they were struggling idea. with javelina and rabbits out mm -hmm. there. That's a good idea. Well, that brings up another point of anything in that herb family, they pretty much stay away from. And that herb family is a big family. Mm -hmm. It's more than just your parsley and, and rosemary. I mean, cone flowers, yarrow. Uh, there's so many things. Germander. There's so many things that fall into that group that also perform so nicely in our area. I did not know germander and coneflower or echinacea were herbs they are they're truly really well no wonder they do so well good night <laughs> they are those are great plant family. great perennials for you mm -hmm. yeah and a lot of different shrubs i i won't we have a wonderful list here i would encourage people to come in or they can go online and pull up that list yeah. but i think the main thing is don't put things in that you know they're going to be drawn to don't put kale in. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, don't tulips. put tulips. In. I mean, I told one lady she wanted tulips. I said, you know, they're like crack cat cocaine for javelinas. Yeah, it's true. She's like, oh my goodness, never thought of that. So <laughs> be careful what you put in your yard if you know you have javelina, and you probably do have javelina. Yeah. And some of you have having a bedding in your backyard. And that's that's a hard one right there. So there you want to actually put a barrier of some sort to keep them out. So we've got more. We've got the list. Ask for the crew and, you know, the Havilene resistive list. Be glad to get you one. You've tuned in to Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. 
Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. We believe in roses that smell like a rose at Waters Garden Center. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. We give this segment to her just because she's so so darn smart. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say cute. And, and cute, okay. No, I never know with women. Do they want to hear cute or smart? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm such a man. Skinny. If only I understood. You forgot the word skinny. You are a, skinny, you are a thinny. Skinny, cute, and smart. You are well. I think just run around the yard keeps you. <laughs> plus, you've got this regiment. You're with Sergeant Steve, Sergeant Steve. and his uh, boot camp. Boot camp. It's You're up at like four thirty in the morning. Ridiculous time in the morning. I don't know how you women do it. Now, as a man, can I join Sergeant Steve's <laughs> no. women only? Women only. Really? That's yes. probably best. And we have fun. Really? Even women? at five thirty in the morning, women we have, have fun. Really? Okay. Yes. So Sergeant Steve's a, f- a friend at, at uh-huh. the you know, chamber stuff, and he's a promoter, but he's an exercise nut. He is super crazy fit, mm-hmm. and I think he is a past sergeant. He, so. is, a, he is an actual sergeant, retired oh. from the Army. Oh, he is. Um, I think he's been retired like a year and a half or something. Got here. bored and said, I'm going to start a boot camp for women. Yeah. Get well, these he's... women in shape. <laughs> he's very into fitness, but not like crazy fitness. He's into have a good time and still be fit. We should have a Waters Garden Center get fit for anyone program. <laughs> and whenever a semi comes in, we need to unload all those trees and shrubs off the back. You know, lifting weights. We don't need to lift weights. We need to lift buckets of dirt. That's true. Flats of flowers. And mm-hmm. uh, we'll get you. We'll get you. And we'll whip you into shape. <laughs> Crush your true. back. Increase the arthritis. <laughs> and uh, maybe not. But you'll not be such injured. a good idea. No. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So. Yeah, you are fit. You are, you are smart. You are. What was the other one? Pretty, cute. Cute. I think you're beautiful, my dear. I think you're stunning. (laughs) In fact, the longer we're married, I think I just can't take my eyes off of you. You just, you haven't lost. You're as pleasant to look at now as we were the day we were married. Gosh. Really? I don't know what to say. I can't say that over the airwaves. I take that back. (laughs) (laughs) That's very sweet. Move on. Where where, where are we going with this? Thank you. I want to go cry. I need a tissue. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Back to what we were going to talk about, which is not nearly as romantic or fun. Okay. But but javelina. Oh, there's a transition. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They're ugly, stinky, smelly. (laughs) Don't see well. They charge in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. So javelina, and I would venture to say there's probably no part of Prescott or the surrounding areas, surrounding cities that do not have javelina. Now, I don't know if they're up in Flagstaff. Probably mm. not. What do you think? I don't know. They've got prairie dogs and their own, their own issues. So they're kind of, yeah. they're throughout Northern Arizona. They're, they're just every place. They're throughout Arizona yeah. pretty much. Starting way down south, Tucson, Phoenix, yeah. um, all those places up into here. I just don't know about Flagstaff. Just but, think yeah. of a wild pig that stinks even worse. It's dark colored with a mm-hmm. white band going across its shoulder, big tusks. But they're not a pig. They're a pickerel. Pickerel. <laughs> pickerel. Picking in ear. <laughs> What, related to some rat thing? Pessiary? No. Actually, like I've that. heard they can actually trace them back to some sort of DNA, back to some wild boar in Eastern mm-hmm. Europe or something. So they they do have a pig. They say they're not a pig. Then they say they're, they are a pig. I, I can't, yeah. I'm not sure what they Is are. Is it tomato, tomato? Yeah. I don't know. Basically, they tear up your yard and right. rip you a new one. So they, yeah. they, they're curious about all the they stuff you They are curious. Plant. And you're right. They can't see worth a hoot. They have very bad eyesight but they got a sense of smell yeah. that's crazy crazy good so and that's why they're in checking out your yard because they're smelling stuff and they're hungry and they're yeah. they're supposed to be omnivores now a lot of the new literature i'm reading says we think they're more just herbivores they may eat some insect grubs and that type of thing but they're mainly looking for roots and plants and seeds yeah. and that type of thing i think they'll eat anything they come across that could but be. they're rooting up the soil, and what are they going to come across the most? Roots and the plants you just planted. Right. Yeah, they're just yeah, which is 
herbivore? Herbivore. And omnivore is I'll eat anything in front of my eyes? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So I there's, think yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I'm just bringing it up because I thought it was interesting. As we learn things all the time, it changes. Yeah. Um, another thing that's changed, we've had a list for, I don't know how long, of animal resi- javelina resistant plants. And I think in the what, early 90s, we put the that forest list service, together. And we came up with that. And, and, the, yeah, right. just walk in the neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. What are they leaving alone? Came up with that list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Javelinas being javelinas, they also adapt well. True. So they are eating things that have been on the old list. And we're finding, oh, okay, we need to take that one off because they're eating that one. What can we put back <laughs> on is the question. Right. So, yeah. So that's kind of always the list changes a bit. But there's yeah. some things you can do. To keep the javelinas out of your yard and don't don't feed them. Number one, yeah, don't let your neighbors feed them. Don't feed the javelina. What are you thinking? Do not but feed them. But they're so them. cute, the little babies, and they're adorable. But how many do you want in your yard well, that's why they and in your neighbor's yard? Sauce. Do you know that they're considered part of the big game hunt? Yeah. So you, I didn't know that. Well, I used to hunt them as a kid. In fact, yeah. as a kid back in the seventies. We, there weren't Havelina up in Prescott. We had to go down to Wickenburg, yeah. Anthem, New River, those areas, mm-hmm. uh, to go hunt Havelina. And so they introduced them up here in the mountains Oops. later. Mm-hmm. And that's how we've got the herds up here. There were never Havelina up here as a kid. So yeah. it's a, relatively in the last 20, 30 years mm-hmm. have they shown up. Right. Yeah. So if you've got them, you can't just shoot them because you're tired of them. And you can't no. just poison them. That's right. You have to be careful or you'll get yourself in trouble. That's right. Don't That's let true. anyone know that you did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have heavenlies, don't put out bird seed. And I know you want to feed the birds and love the birds, but they love bird seed yeah. and they're going to come find it. Same with a bird bath. They want water. They're looking for water sources. So they're going to knock over your bird bath yeah. and they're going to be drawn into that. So just don't. We'll get a better bird a feeder so yard. it doesn't. Well, that's true. An an electric fence, Mm -hmm. one foot off the ground. Even in neighborhoods where they say you can't have fence, you can sneak that up and spray paint it green because that's what we did in our (laughs) neighborhood. And no one knows we have it. I put it on a timer. So it only comes on the evening when Lisa and her dogs are not out there. Yep. I remember one time I was out there pulling weeds and it was the timer had gotten mixed up. I don't know if a storm knocked it off or whatever. Just about knocked me on my rear end. Thank you very much. Tingled all the way up my arm. Thought I was having a heart attack. That's not <laughs> knocking you on your butt. That's my my hand is tingling. Well, Strokes do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty sure I was dying. Anyway, so what plants can we put out so, there that oh, they we won't eat? Talk about plants. Yeah. Well, if you want to look for flowers, we're kind of moving into that fall season. Um, Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Yeah. Chrysanthemums, a great fall plant, nice, pretty long lasting fall color. Yeah. They don't bother them, don't like them at all. Snapdragons are another yeah, great way yeah. that they. Asters, same way. Asters, um, alyssum, it's been on the list for a long, long time. Occasionally they'll eat it, but I think if you put it with your snaps and other things that they're not going to want to bother, they'll just leave that alone yeah. too. You know, I had someone out in Stone Ridge area, out in Prescott mm-hmm. Valley. They had rosemary. They took some rosemary cuttings. They were coming in bothering one of their other shrubs, Mm -hmm. uh, I think euonymus. And they put that around their euonymus, and they stopped bothering. They didn't plant rosemary. They just put cuttings around it. And that rosemary fragrance, that herbal fragrance, just Mm -hmm. kept them away. I think they were struggling with javelina and rabbits out Mm -hmm. there. That's a good idea. Well, that brings up another point of anything in that herb family they pretty much stay away from it. And that herb family is a big family. Mm-hmm. It's more than just your parsley and, and rosemary. I mean, cone flowers, yarrow. Uh, there's so many things, germander. There's so many things that fall into that group that also perform so nicely in our area. I did not know germander and cone flower or echinacea were herbs. They are. They're truly, really? Well, no wonder they do so well. Good night. <laughs> they are Those in are the great plant, family. great perennials for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of different shrubs. I'm, I won't, we have a wonderful list here. I would encourage people to come in or they can go online and pull up that list. Yeah. But I think the main thing is don't put things in that you know they're going to be drawn to. Don't put kale 
And, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, don't tulips. put s- tulips. In. I mean, I told one lady she wanted tulips, and I said, you know, they're like crack cat cocaine for javelinas. You yeah, know? It's true. She's like, oh my goodness, never thought of that. So, <laughs> Be careful what you put in your yard if you know you have javelina, and you probably do have javelina. Yeah, and some of you have javelina bedding in your backyard, and that's, that's a hard one right there. So there you want to actually put a barrier of some sort to keep them out. So we've got more. We've got the list. Ask for the crew and you know the javelina-resistive list. Glad to get you on. You tune in to Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Lavender Shades Blooming Penta. One of the best butterfly-attracting plants. It's right up there with milkweed, only prettier. Hummingbirds have to dance around all the butterflies of this deeply colored summer bloomer. Plant a few in the vegetable garden to attract pollinators that help tomatoes and squash set more fruit, all for under $10. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love to garden, they love to shop. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. Now, I have a very big shout out to give to some friends of mine. Now, I had uh, all the garden centers, the biggest garden centers in the state of Arizona. We all know each other. We help each other. We formed our own co-op because Arizona is hard to get plants into, to talk to growers. We're so spread out. Each one of us is 100 miles away. And so we formed this co-op called Independent Nurseries of Arizona. And so the biggest players in Tucson, the biggest player in Phoenix and the White Mountains and Payson and Flagstaff and Prescott, we're all together and we get together twice a year just to catch up, socialize, make each other better, share what we're finding uh, with, with our employees, with our marketing, with our vendors, what the trends are. And so we had some sponsors, some big growers came and hung out with us, but some specific uh, very specific thank yous go out to Margot Christensen with Spring Hill Suites in Prescott. So she's got the Marriott right downtown Prescott. She and her husband own that. And so she's a good friend, a Rotarian. We hang together with business leaders together here in Prescott. And when I knew all the garden centers were coming to Prescott, I said, I'm in trouble. Margot, help me. And so she helped me put together a program. She got me room, blocks of rooms. She got... Uh, Uh, extra uh, meeting spaces and catering and buses. Uh, So what we did is we landed in Prescott this past week and then uh, had some some connections here at the garden center, some wine and cheese in the back, went down to the Gurley Street Grill upstairs and had a a, a fine dinner. Uh, Then we loaded a bus and we went to Yavapai College, their their, their Camp Verde campus. Nikki Bagley, the professor of viticulture, gave us the inside scoop at Yavapai College of what are they doing in agribusiness to train students uh, to take care of vineyards, uh, wine vineyards specifically. And so we got a very detailed, energetic. It was It's good to have that inside scoop. They almost got excited that a bunch of other, I mean, frontline, larger agribusiness folks are coming to her school to hear what's going on. This is exciting stuff, especially over in the Verde Valley. You all, you all in the Verde, you know what that's all about. It's it's a whole industry coming into itself from tourism to actual selling wines. It's exciting. We took the bus from there, went in downtown Cottonwood, old Cottonwood, or Cottonwood, yeah, and uh, had dinner and walked around. And, and these, these folks are from all over the state, from every corner of the state that has a it has a garden center in it. They're here. So there's a busload of us. We unload, and they were stunned at how great Cottonwood is. You all made me look good. Well done, Cottonwood. Yes, you guys are awesome. From there, we went over to Page Spring Cellars, 
And we had the back behind the scene tour from their head grower. And they showed us what's going on. They're in the harvest. Uh, then they fed us. And then we bust back. And then uh, that uh, the next morning, we, we had it, uh, a meeting again. By Friday afternoon, we all left. And so that was, uh, I couldn't have done it without Margo Christensen. Thank you. Master's Touch Buses. You guys were unbelievably professional. Thank you for helping me look good. Uh, for Nikki Bagley, Professor, you are a, a, a an asset to Yavapai College. And as an alum of Yavapai College, uh, Alumni of the Year, I think, when was that? A few years ago. I love Yavapai College and all they do. Thank you. You made me look good in Page Spring Cellar. You guys are, are always classy. If you've not been over there to, to visit that vineyard and eat some of their food and go through some of their wine tasting, it's worth the trip. It's only an hour away and beautiful. Well done. Thank you very much. It's exciting to be uh, surrounded by professionals that, that help each other in a small town. I think that plays out really well. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. Come visit, say hi. Anything we can help you with in the garden? Just ask. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal, loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling, and it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. We believe local businesses are better than impersonal box stores at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to the area. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener.